Hi all, let's talk about how I became multi-cloud architect in just three months. In this video, I'm going to cover all my journey, which starts from the thought, what is multi-cloud and why is multi-cloud important? We are going to cover that. Then we are going to talk about the full step-by-step -step process and how much money it costed to me, as well as how much time and effort I had to put. So I took four steps. One is AWS Cloud Solution Architect Associate, second is AZ900, then AZ303, and then AZ304, then I became multi-cloud architect. But let's start with the first one, which is what is multi-cloud? So what is multi-cloud? Multi-cloud is a model of cloud computing where an organization utilizes a combination of clouds. Now this combination could be two or more public clouds, two or more private clouds or a combination of both public and private clouds. So now the definition is clear. Let's talk more about it, which is multi-cloud adoption. So as per Gartner, multi-cloud adoption is increasing and 81% of organizations are working with two or more public cloud providers. The reason for that is a multi-cloud strategy gives companies the freedom to use best possible cloud for each workload and to avoid vendor lock-in. They are no more lock in to one particular vendor and they have the option to pick best possible cloud. And there are a lot of other benefits also which we are gonna cover. So now there is a confusion sometime there which we need to be very clear. What is the difference between multi-cloud versus hybrid cloud? So as I mentioned here, unlike hybrid cloud, multi-cloud does not require use of private cloud. So it may or may not have a private cloud in its setup, but it is not needed. So an organization could be multi-cloud if they're using more than one public cloud. For example, an organization is using AWS and Azure, that is multi-cloud. But in hybrid cloud, you need a private cloud as part of it. And second is, unlike hybrid cloud, multi-cloud does not require unified and coordinated operation to work between the different cloud environments. I mean, as long as they are connected, that is good enough. But in hybrid, it is like the connection is more uniform and coordinated operations. So it is more tightly coupled in hybrid cloud. But with that said, seamless visibility operation between environment is an ideal scenario in order to achieve most value from the multi-cloud strategy. So even though those are not tightly coupled, but they are well connected. So in normal world, it's possible to have a setup which is both multi-cloud as well as hybrid cloud. Put another way, hybrid cloud is always considered multi-cloud, but multi-cloud is not always considered hybrid cloud. Let's see some examples. So in first example, it is uh, using two public clouds, AWS and Azure. So it is straightforward, a multi-cloud. But in the down example, it's using two public clouds and one private cloud. So is this a multi-cloud? Yes, it is a multi-cloud, but at the same time, it is also a hybrid cloud. So just wanted to have this definition clear and the difference is clear so that uh, we know we are focusing currently on multi-cloud and what it is. Now the question about why multi-cloud because single cloud has some known issues. One is higher complexity and limitation of proprietary systems of one cloud provider, siloed data because data is siloed to one cloud provider and there is always a concentrated risk which companies are not in favor of nowadays. That means a lot of your application services are concentrated to one vendor and there are impediments which we are gonna talk and there is lack of control and opaque cost, transparency in cost or the competition in cost is less if you are in a single cloud environment which we are gonna also talk more. So these are the few challenges we have in single cloud system and most of this could be overcome with multi-cloud benefits. For example, as I have listed here, provider specific services. So organization now can choose from different cloud provider to best fit specific applications. So they can choose different providers to provide what they are best at. Enhanced scalability. As you have multiple provider, multi-cloud is more scalable than a single cloud. Containers and microservices. Sometime organization that utilizes microservices when deploying centralized application with Kubernetes may find that some services are only available for a specific cloud provider. So multi-cloud helps in this case. 
reduce latencies, disperse organization or worldwide organization, for example, can reduce latencies by choosing local cloud provider, vendor based on their different facility location. And sometimes it is uh, mandated by regulatory and governance. For example, it may be needed for government regulation and data regulation laws that certain type of data reside within specific geography. So in that case, if you have multi-cloud, you can use one vendor which provide local data storage while you can use another vendor which provide data storage at another location in a multi-cloud setup. Reduced footprint and lower cost. Most organization that employs multi-cloud uses the public cloud for infrastructure, avoiding the need of build and maintain their own data center. Because if you are not in public cloud, or I should say multi-cloud, then organization will end up having some data center in their private cloud or handling the infrastructure by themselves. But if you're in multi-cloud, they can use one cloud as a virtual data center while other cloud for the other services. Bargaining power, of course, when you have multiple cloud services competing, that ensures that you have a competitive price for their offering. So these are the benefit of multi-cloud. That's the reason it is uh, being growing too much. Now back to my cloud journey. Now we have clarity on what is multi-cloud and why people are going, why we want to go. Now let's see these four steps which I took to become a multi-cloud architect. So the first one is AWS Solution Architect Associate. This is where I started my journey. 40 to 50 hours of preparation in four weeks of time to do this exam. I have prepared another video, which I'm gonna put a link and you can see on the I notification also, where I have mentioned all this 40 to 50 hours detailed hour by hour plan and what courses I took, what labs I practiced, and the practices etc all the details i have covered so that's where i spent 40 to 50 hours in four weeks i was able to do it in the difficulty level i consider this is a hard exam there are no labs preparation cost for this exam is almost hundred dollar i have covered all the courses and where the aws uh, test and other practice tests etc in the video which i have linked and the exam cost itself is 150 dollar but nowadays there is a 50% discount going on, which anyone can get by enrolling into AWS Cloud Architect Challenge. It's a very simple challenge. You just need to do some online course. So with that, you can get $75 off. I have another video for that. And uh, all this exam discount as and when it comes, I keep uploading on my channel. So I'm gonna put that link also for your reference. That covers about the cost and about the exam itself there was like 65 questions it may vary a little bit in your case and all are multiple choice question 50 questions affect your score and other 15 questions are unscored 72 percent uh, passing marks good thing is there is no negative marking we have 130 minutes to complete the exam you can flag question and come back to review later and my tip for this exam is the question are tricky and sometimes lengthy don't spend more than two minutes on one question if doubtful, flag the question, move to the next question and plan to come back later. Otherwise, there is a risk of running out of time. So this is AWS exam and I'm going to put a summary at the end how much total cost for this and time and everything, the later part of this video. Now moving on, second one I did after doing AWS is Microsoft Azure Fundamental AZ900. So this is not mandatory to become a multi-cloud architect, but I did it because I wanted to gain some fundamental of Azure after doing AWS in detail. And there are a free training for this provided by Microsoft and the exam itself is also free. So I'm gonna share more details how you can get that. But yeah, that was another reason I said, let's try it out and it will give me some basic knowledge about Azure. So preparation time for this was 16 hours. Eight hours was training, which was given by Microsoft and eight hours of self study and practice test. So I took two weeks to finish this because I was a little bit slow in this. But yeah, I took two weeks to clear this exam. Difficulty level is easy, especially after you are done with AWS architect certification, you will find it easy because the overall cloud concept will already be clear with you. And there is no lab. Preparation cost, as I mentioned, it's a free training from Microsoft. And I'm gonna put a link here. How do you get that? You may end up spending $20 
for a practice test but the training itself is free and exam cost also if you do free training from microsoft which is online you get a free washer for the exam so it's a free cost for the exam and the certification itself about the exam you get around 50 questions all multiple choice question there are 700 score to pass the exam no negative marking 85 minutes to complete the exam and same you can flag questions and come back to review later so my tip here stay same questions are tricky some are lengthy don't spend too much time on one question if doubtful flag it and try to come back later so this is about azure fundamental az 900 exam so with this we are almost halfway through and now we are going to talk about azure solution architect expert and there are two exams for that az303 and az304 let's see that as number three so this is uh, az303 which is azure solution architect technologies exam and the next one is about design so there is a lot of overlap between az303 and 304 but this exam talks about technology so i feel the order wise this exam goes first but it's not mandatory but it makes sense to do this exam first and it talks about a lot of technologies which are being used in Azure. And it talks about a lot of implementation for that. So for preparation time for this exam is like 40 to 45 hours, three weeks. I have another video which I'm going to put a link here. And you can check at the i notification, which talks about step by step, hour by hour, how to spend that time, what courses to take, what practice exam you have to do, and the three weeks plan for that. I definitely recommend to go through that because that gives you a great plan and reference material to clear this exam in three weeks. Difficulty level for this also I consider hard. Now labs in this exam, there used to be labs, but uh, recently they are not coming up. So it's not officially declared that Microsoft is taking away the labs for this exam. So that's why I put maybe. Mostly those won't be there, but they can bring it back. Preparation cost for this is around $100, which include courses as well as practice tests. And exam cost for this is $165, but with 50% discount for Azure also, there is a cloud challenge going on. It's pretty simple to get that 50% discount using that challenge. I have another video explaining that step by step process. I'm going to put a link for that here. Look for that and make sure you take 50% discount on that and I regularly keep uploading videos whenever any new discount or any new updates are available for a certification so stay tuned if there is any more discount or updates are coming up you will see on this channel now about this exam there are like 40 to 60 questions all multiple choice question or some scenario based drag and drop etc 72% passing marks are needed no negative marking 150 minutes to complete the exam as other exam you can flag and come back the my tip for this is questions are tricky and sometimes related there are multiple questions which are related to each other so read carefully and use elimination if not clear in az303 as there are a lot of technologies to learn i have prepared a cram video where i have clearly defined what exactly you should remember for that exam i'm going to put a link for that also that could be very useful please have a look at that now the final one which is azure solution architect design AZ304. So as I earlier mentioned, AZ303 and 304 has a lot of overlap. After doing AZ303, this exam will feel very easy. So preparation time for this is 10 to 15 hours. If done right after AZ303, you can even do in less difficulty level. I'm keeping it as easy as there is a lot of overlap. And labs, maybe same thing as I mentioned in AZ303. Preparation cost less in this case because you don't need to do that many practice tests because you are already has three or three clear so 60 dollar for that exam cost again 165 dollar but we have 50 percent discount based upon the azure cloud challenge i will put a link for that about the exam everything as az303 i have mentioned it here so with that we covered step four as well now here let's summarize my journey to multi-cloud architect time as we mentioned it took four weeks for first exam aws architect exam and two weeks for az 900 three weeks for az 303 and 
two weeks for three or four because there were a lot of overlap. So total three months of time it took. Cost wise, one seventy five dollar for AWS Solution Architect Associate, twenty dollar for AZ nine hundred because training and the exam itself was free. Only the practice test you may need to buy. And AZ three o three again there are fifty percent uh, offer from Azure Clouds Challenge. Same way we have for AWS as well, and AZ three o four. Since there are a lot of overlap, so you may need less preparation material. And the total cost to become multi cloud architect is five twenty five dollars and three months. Now difficulty levels, as I mentioned, AWS Cloud Solution Architect Associate is hard. AZ nine hundred was easy. AZ three o three, which is more on technologies, is hard. And AZ three o four is easy. Labs. There are no labs in this first two exam, and uh, in Azure exam also there are good chances that there are no labs. But I have put maybe because it used to be there, and they can start it depending upon when you are taking the exam. So this is a summary. I hope you like it. Based on my experience, I think it's definitely worth to spend three months and around five hundred dollars to get this multi cloud architect because multi cloud architect is in demand and this also help you think across vendors and what services are good in one vendor versus what are good in other vendor so good luck and i hope you also get this multi cloud architect if you like this video like share subscribe for more videos like this thank you